Hey everyone, this is Lyndon. Welcome back to Visionary Universe. I am so excited to bring you this next episode, which quite frankly has been long overdue. So you've probably seen the previous fire simulation tutorial I posted last year, and I got an inverse heavenly amount of requests to remake the tutorial from more of a beginner's perspective. And I very well intend to do just that. So let me just say that there are so many After Effects fundamental amazing techniques and features that we're going to cover today. So. I mean, you're going to come out of this video a completely different person. In fact, well, I mean, you'll probably have the same eye color. But other than that, you know, the knowledge you receive will force you with the force to become a completely different person. Except your eye color. I mean, everything else will change, but your eye color will probably be the same. <laughs> so maybe you guys are a little bit entertained by now. Probably not. Uh, but you're not here to be entertained. You're here to become a visionary. And, you know, that's... That's not an opinion. I didn't say that as an opinion. Like, you're not supposed to argue with that. I don't even want you to think argumentative thoughts. Anyway, visionary. Yeah, I like it. Oh my, let me get back on the subject. That, that'd be great. Yeah, it would be. So as I've been talking, you've probably seen the final result several times by now. And you can see that it's definitely a more realistic update relative to the last fire simulation video I made. And in fact, in that last uh, video, I was talking about how bad some of the other fire simulations were. But now, now that we have the new and improved version, I'm going to talk about how bad my old fire simulation video is. I mean, it was bad. I mean, it was so feathery. <clears throat> anyway, um, just how life goes, cycle of life, all that stuff. Um, you know, I have a good idea. Let's, uh, let's start creating a fire simulation. Change of plans. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get to it. So let's go ahead and create a new solid, and this will be called our fire body. Alright, next I'll go ahead and drag our star layer in, and this star is what we're going to be burning off of. So let's go ahead and scale this down to maybe 35%. Then with this align window over here, we'll center it. Let's go ahead and click on our fire body layer, and let's go ahead and start masking around this star. So it's going to burn around this star. Let's go ahead and click here to here. And we'll add a little bit of margin so that it's not exactly touching the edge of the star. Just like that. So let's go ahead and go around, all the way around. To this point and then we'll maybe turn on our action a uh, title safe and then we'll go to that point lift it up just like that do it pretty high all right so let's go ahead and make a few adjustments maybe we also do not want a point here at the top so let's go ahead and click on our mask tool go to con convert vertex tool click there also let's go ahead and convert that vertex as well so there's uh, practically the fundamental shape of our fire effect. And we can go ahead and turn off this star. All right, so one of the differences we're going to do in this tutorial when compared to the other one is that we're going to make everything a lot sharper. All right, and, and that was a mistake I made last time. Everything was too feathered and blurry. And that doesn't look like real fire. Real fire is actually has sharp edges and things like that. So we're going to add some feather here. Click the layer and hit F for feather. It's going to open up your feather parameter. And we're just going to add a little bit of feather. So maybe something like four pixels of feathers. Just enough to where it blends together a little bit. All right, but now around the top half, we want to blur this top half a little more. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a fast blur effect. And we'll apply this to the fire body. And just blur this out to maybe uh, 60 pixels. And then we'll mask this effect to the top half of the fire element. Alright, so now pay close attention because we're going to be using this technique throughout the rest of the tutorial. And, ver and earlier versions of After Effects, maybe CS6 and earlier, do not have this feature. And I'll show you a workaround. But, but for those of you who are updated to CC, this will work and it's very useful. So we'll grab the rectangular mask tool and just mask the top half of this. And we're going to make this mask mask out the effect. So we'll double click on the fast blur effect. And we'll go down here to compositing options. And then we'll choose mask 2. All right, so mask two will now mask the fast blur effect, and then we'll add some feather to that mask, just like that. So now mask two is masking the fast blur effect, and that's really cool. We'll be using that throughout the entire tutorial. Also down here in the compositing options, we have the option of turning down the effect opacity. So we'll turn this down just a little bit. Let's create one more mask, and let's just blur this out a little bit like that. And we'll turn down the effect opacity of this fast blur two. So we'll go to compositing options, turn that down, yeah, just like that. Alright, so now we have this interesting candle looking shape. We already made several adjustments, but it certainly does not look like fire yet. The first thing we do before we can actually start giving it that turbulent look, we have to make it move around, make this um, 
maybe like a candle fire. So what we're going to do is add a liquify effect. And just follow me for just a minute, you'll see what I'm doing. So I'll apply the liquify to the fire body and grab this tool right here. And we really want to scale up the size of this tool. So go to the brush size, make it a lot bigger, a lot bigger. So even bigger than that. So what we'll do is actually put this liquify effect before the fast blurs. And then we'll select that tool and, and push this down. And what we're going to do is animate the distortion percentage so that flickers up and down. So we'll do this with expressions. So we'll go to distortion percentage and add an expression. Hold alternate and click the stopwatch. That's how you add an expression. You hold alternate and click the stopwatch and it opens this hidden um, place where you can enter text and expressions and do really, really cool things. So we're going to type in wiggle and it's pretty self-explanatory what it's going to do is change or wiggle the value of the distortion percentage. So there's two parameters of this wiggle. We have the frequency and the amplitude. That makes sense. So for the frequency, we'll do about uh, 5, and for the amplitude, we'll do about uh, 70. And we'll change the default position of this distortion percentage uh, to 70. So now if you look in the graph editor, you can see that the value of this distortion percentage is wiggling. So that's going to cause a wiggling effect in the fire body. So let's take a preview of that. All right, so you can see exactly what it's doing. And like I said, it's similar to maybe like a birthday candle or something like that. And this certainly will help the look of our effect later on. So now we're at the cool part where we add some distortion and uh, turbulence to this fire. So this can get a little bit complex for beginners, but it all makes a lot of sense. So if you just follow, watch closely, this will make a lot of sense because I know you can figure this out. What we're going to do is create a displacement map. And we're going to do this with fractal noise. So let's create a new solid. Control Y is a good shortcut. And we'll call this fractal noise and we're going to do this for the map. So let's go ahead and apply fractal noise effect to this solid. We're going to turn down the complexity to maybe 4 and then we're going to uncheck uniform scale and we're going to do this so that we can increase this, the height so that it stretches into streams, alright? And that's very important to think about throughout this effect is creating streams, like it's streams of fire going up. It's not like blocks of fire, alright? Um, and so that's why we're going to create, like I said, streams. All right, so maybe increase the width a little bit, increase that height to a pretty high value. So now we've created those streams, and it's and the way that it's going to displace it is going to be very similar to fire. It's going to have that vertical. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of a word other than stream, but I guess stream is the only way I can think of. This vertical slits of fire going up, whatever. <laughs> so there's our map so far. Maybe just turn down the width. And now what we want to do is animate the turbulent offset so that it moves upward. So the way we're going to do this is um, add an expression to it. And we're going to do this with a quick expression. It may seem a little bit complicated, but it's very simple. We're going to create square brackets. So there's two values in this turbulent offset. There's the x value and the y value. And somehow in this expression, we need to access each of those values. So the way we do this is create two square brackets and separate them with a comma. On the left side of the column, we have the x value and the x value it's horizontal and we want zero movement so we'll just put a set value of zero so it doesn't change but we want the y value to change and we'll do this by typing in time so now the y value will be equal to the value of time here the value of time is one one second so you can see here that turbulent offset y is now equal to one because we're at one second in time so as we increase in time the value of this turbulent increases so that's so that's really cool how we can do that so now um, but we want to change much faster because time changes very slowly. So we're going to multiply this by negative 1,000, maybe 1,800. So we multiply that by a lot. So in here at one second, it multiplies 1 by negative 1,800. So it's at 1,800 here. So it does 2 times 1,800. And, and the reason why we do negative is because negative values move upward. Positive values move down. So there's our expression. And we, and we can see that it animates it upward. So no matter where we are, it's always going to animate upward at a constant rate. So here's kind of an example of how displacement maps work. The, the brightness of the displacement map defines how the pixels will be displaced, so it's pretty cool. That's how it works. Alright, so this displacement map is looking really good, but we don't want it to displace this bottom part down here. We only want it to displace the top part. So, so what we're going to do is create a gray solid. We'll make this brightness 50%. And the reason why we're going to create a gray solid is we're going to mask it down here at the bottom, and so that so that the displacement map effect will not displace where there is gray. All right. So the way it works is it displaces pixels 
one way in white areas and place displaces pixels the opposite direction where there's black. But where there's gray, it doesn't displace them in any direction. So that's why we're going to mask out this um, gray solid here at the bottom so that it doesn't displace um, this bottom half. So that's exactly the way displacement maps work and that's really cool. Let's go ahead and pre-compose these together now that we're finished with the map. All right, we have to pre-compose the map to use it. So we'll call this displacement map. Let's go ahead and turn it off and we'll add a displacement map effect to the fire body. For the displacement map layer, we'll choose our displacement map that we created, just like that. And for the vertical displacement, we'll do zero. But for the horizontal, we're going to increase this a lot. So you can see there those streams we created, um, the kind of vertical streams. And if they're not streamy enough, what you can do is just increase the, um, the scale height more. All right, it looks really cool already. You can kind of see the fire feel to it. I have a feeling this is going to turn out pretty good. So now this fire is lacking a little bit of detail, and there's a way we can add that back. Um, we have this these streams the way we want them, but there's a way we can add detail without changing things too much. So first off, I want to add contrast, and the reason I want to add contrast is because that's going to make um, sharper edges, and that's going to make a sharper fire look, and it's going to look more realistic. The sharper your fire, honestly, the more realistic it's going to be. And, for, and as far as adding detail, what we're going to do is add a turbulent displace. And then we're just going to turn down the size a lot. And then maybe turn up the complexity a decent bit. And then turn down that amount quite a lot. So maybe something like 15. So you can see that's going to add a lot of detail. So there you go. It adds that detail. And also we want to attach the offset turbulence of our turbulent displace to the offset turbulence of our fractal noise so that they move together. So we'll add an expression, just grab the pick whip here and attach it to the offset turbulence of the fractal noise. All right, all right, and we can make a few more subtle adjustments, maybe add a fast blur. And we're gonna do this actually a vertical blur. So we'll set this blur dimensions to vertical. Um, so it adds like a motion blur or something like that. Go to the compositing options, turn the effect opacity down, maybe 25, something like that. All right, so it's looking marvelously luscious so far. All right, so now it's time to add some texture. And the way we'll do this is just type in fractal noise, and we'll apply this directly to the fire body. So we also want to always remember to do the blending mode for fractal noise when there's transparency to be none. So you can see here that right now the edges are grayed out because the blending mode is set to normal. We'll set this to none, and you can see that it really fixes the edges. So, so remember that uh, technique. Let's go to transform and we're also going to create those same streams like just like before and we do that by unchecking uniform scale and increasing the height so that it, you know height so it creates those vertical streams and maybe we can turn down the width just a little bit and then turn down the complexity so we get those beautiful streams that we're going for we can increase the contrast to create that sharpness i was talking about but the contrast is too harsh of an effect so what we can do is go down to the compositing options of the fractal noise and turn this down to about uh, 50 or so. So now we can increase that contrast a lot without the effect being too harsh because we did that cool technique of you know find a way to get what you want. If you want to if you want to increase that contrast, increase that sharpness, do it and then find a way to counteract the negative effects that come from it. Like there's negative effects it's too harsh when we do the contrast, but we found a way to counteract that when we turn down the effect opacity. So there's always a way to do what you want. So just be creative and find those cool techniques to accomplish what you want. All right, and now we need to animate the offset turbulence. So we'll add an expression, hold alt, click the stopwatch. So that's going to animate upward with everything else. So we've got some texture to our fire now. All right, definitely helping. All right, so now you can see these streams uh, looking good, but they're too straight. They're going directly upward. And what we're going to do is add some turbulent, turbulent displace to add, make those streams a little more wavy and a little more fire looking. All right, so that's going to give the, it's going to give the real fire texture. So we'll create an adjustment layer. Control turn up Y. Look, uh, turbulent this displace. Okay, I promised you guys I'd show you a technique that's a substitute for that feature that's only in After Effects CC, and that is masking effects. You can't do that. In earlier versions of After Effects but there is definitely a functional substitute that can create the same effect so basically what you can do is create an adjustment layer then apply your effects to the adjustment layer and then you mask the adjustment layer 
and all right so that's just like masking effects except you have to create an adjustment layer and then maybe pre-compose some stuff together to get just the way you want it but they're definitely everything you can do with masking effects you can just create an adjustment layer apply your effects to the adjustment layer and then mask the adjustment layer so that's like masking your effects um, I noticed a lot of people commented um, before asking about that so that's the way you fix it let me go ahead and remove that mask so what we're gonna do is do a turbulent displace and we're gonna adjust the look of this a little maybe we'll do about 60 for the size and for the amount we'll do about 25 for the complexity we'll do about two so we got this nice uh, wavy look and that's gonna that's gonna be right for our fire and uh, maybe 2.5 for the complexity so let's go ahead and animate the offset turbulence I think I, I'm gonna retype that expression square brackets comma for the X value I'll do zero for the Y value I do time times negative 1800 all right, our fire looks good, but it's just making all this wave down here, so we need to fix that. And the way we'll do this is you just mask the adjustment layer and, and hence masking the turbulent displace. I, I think you guys get the idea. So when I mask this out, keep all this. So now we have um, the turbulent displace only applying to the top part of the effect, just like we want it. And we can also duplicate this turbulent displace effect. Just make some subtle adjustments, maybe make the size smaller in this one, so maybe 45 and the complexity less, maybe uh, 1.5. And also turn the amount down just a little bit. So it's always a good idea to go to the random seed and just change it all together so it completely changes the look of it. Also maybe make adjustments to the speed of the turbulent offset, so maybe 1600, just add some variation. So we got some nice variation and that second turbulent displace. There is one last very important thing to do, and that is to create separations from these top streams to the body of the fire, right? The way fire works is these top streams, when they're burning up, they actually disconnect to the rest of the fire and then burn out separately. So we're going to create that cool effect. It's very important. You'll see what I'm talking about if you don't understand me now. So what I'm going to do is call this separation. And uh, go ahead and apply fractal noise. We're going to do this with a fractal noise effect as well. So what we're going to do is scale this up a decent bit. We're going to add a lot of contrast, just like that. And maybe just add some fast blur to that um, afterwards. Maybe just add some more contrast, scale it up. Yeah, give, give it that kind of look. Maybe turn the brightness down just a little bit. So maybe you guys get kind of the feel we're going for. And I uh, also want to add a fast blur and blur it vertically a little bit. And I think this is important also to about 50%. So all right, this is how it's going to work, guys. We're going to mask this separation effect to the top half of this flame. So grab your rectangular mask tool and mask out the top half just like that. So turn it on. Make sure to turn make sure to turn your blending mode to none. That's very important. So, and then we'll add some feather just like that. And then what we're going to do is multiply this. But we can't do that because there's a transparent background. But we can easily fix this just by creating an adjustment layer. Call this solid composite and you can guess what effect I'm gonna do is a solid composite make this a black solid composite just like that so now we can multiply the separation onto the top of this effect so remember to animate this upward so go to the offset turbulence and that's gonna animate upward and so let me show you guys what it does see now these streams are disconnecting from the body and then they're burning off separately and that's the way fire works right See, like this point right here, it's disconnected from the rest of the body and it's burning off separately because of this separation layer we made. And so that really helps the realism of the fire effect. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start compositing the star. So we turned it off at the beginning of the tutorial, now we're going to turn it back on. So the star is right there. So right now it's not looking too great, but we will certainly make some adjustments. So first thing, I'm going to duplicate the star and, and turn that duplicate off. Just keep it there. Turn it off. Now for the first one, what I'm going to do is add a fill effect. I'm going to make this pure black. And I'll turn down the opacity of that star layer just a little bit. Maybe to 85. And I'll do that so that there's you know little hints of the fire uh, rising above the front of the star, going over the star. Alright, so that's precisely how I want it. So what we're going to do next is pre-compose all of these layers together, except that star layer that we made a duplicate of. So we'll pre-compose and we'll do move all attributes and we'll call this flame. All right, so how this is gonna work is we're gonna put the flame layer above the star layer and then we're gonna do a screen blending mode. So it's gonna screen the fire on top of that star layer. All right, so we're getting somewhere but it's not looking perfect. We have those little hints like I was talking about of the flame kind of rising in front of the star. And uh, why don't we go ahead and start color correcting or, or adding 
colorization to our flame and this is kind of the fun part to me um, right before we do the colorization what we need to do is sharpen this flame up a little bit so what we'll do is we'll go inside the flame composition and uh, um, under the star layer let's go ahead and create an adjustment layer it's kind of hard for me to type because the microphone's in front of my keyboard but anyway let's go ahead and apply an unsharp mask to this adjustment layer and uh, we'll go ahead and crank up the radius so that it gets all that detail just like that turn up the amount so there we go we have this sharp flame effect and this is going to work perfectly and when we add that glow and stuff it's going to uh, feather it back out a little bit so don't worry about making it too sharp all right let's add that color let's go to the curves effect that's pretty much the way i always do it let's go to the blue and turn down the blue that kind of leaves some of the yellow colors in there and we'll turn up the red just a little bit so it doesn't look too limey all right let's go to the green maybe add a little contrast and uh, turn the for the highlights we'll turn the green up causing more yellow and for the shadows we'll bring it down adding more of a red tint for those shadows okay I like that how it is we don't want to make it too vibrant because there's gonna be a lot of color in the glow let's go ahead and start adding some glow let's add our first glow and this first glow is gonna be a tighter um, more condensed glow so we'll turn the glow threshold down so it gets pretty much all those colors maybe 15 we'll go ahead and increase the radius to maybe just over a hundred like that and then we need to make this a screen operation and instead of doing original colors, because this has got a strange colorization to it, we'll do colors A and B so we can customize the colors. And then we'll do color looping, A is greater than B. It's a good idea to always do um, sawtooth, A is greater than B. For color B, it's, it's the darker color, so we'll make it more of a, a darker red orangish color. And for color A, we'll do this for more of a bright yellow color. Okay, that's got that perfect golden touch to it. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. And, uh, and for this one, we'll make it more of a broad expanded glow. That extends pretty far out, so we'll increase that radius just like that. I love creating these glows. Maybe for this second glow, we'll increase the threshold so it gets just more of those highlights rather than everything else. Okay, then we'll add just one more glow, and this is gonna this glow is gonna really complement the highlights, so we'll turn it up to 80, so it only gets about 20% of those highlights. We'll increase the radius just a little bit, so you can see it's really, uh, like I said, complementing those highlights. We'll turn the glow operation to screen. And uh, that looks pretty good. We'll turn the intensity down just a little bit. All right, so this, ooh, that's looking beautiful. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, so now we're ready to composite that star in there. So we'll go ahead and turn the star layer back on. Looking good, but we need to darken the star. It's far too bright. We'll apply curves to the star layer. Bring that gamma down quite a bit. And then we'll add a tint effect right before that curves because it's far oversaturated. So let me solo this real quick and uh, make it make it a natural golden color just like that I think that looks pretty good now remember you can go into this flame composition and just the opacity of this uh, star layer to determine how visible the star is going to be in the final output so if we want it to be really visible just turn this up to 100 percent so it completely blocks out that fire and the star will be completely visible or we can turn it down a little more to make it look like those flames are kind of rising around and consuming the star so that's just up to you All right, ooh, that's looking beautiful. There are a few things you can do to help it seem like the flame is interacting with the star. Let's go inside this flame layer, and in the fire body, what I'll do is create a mask right around uh, this point of the star right here to make it look like maybe the star is somehow interfering with the flame. Go to the mask, make it subtract so that it kind of subtracts it from that spot. That makes it kind of look like, like I said, the fire's interfering with the star somehow. I think that definitely helps. You can see this little gap right here. and It looks like it's really interacting with this star object. There's definitely a few more things we can do, like maybe masking out certain parts of this star layer. All right, so once you've created a few of those subtractions from this star layer and feathered them out, what you can do is grab your rectangular mask tool, select everything, and what that does is re-adds the subtractions you made, but you can go to that mask layer and turn down its opacity so that there's still hints of that subtraction. So it kind of helps give the feel that the fire is kind of seeping around the front of that star layer. Man, so this is just looking glossy, vibrant, uh, luscious, all those good properties and characteristics and looks mixed together into this one beautiful effect. I'm loving it. And even though it's looking, you know, yellow like a McDonald's french fry, I'm loving this even more than McDonald's, so... Anyway, let's go ahead and add those last few touches. We had a little bit of smoke coming from this fire. You can download free smoke plume from actionvfx.com. Really cool website. I'm actually doing some work for them. Really good people. Check out the website actionvfx.com. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag one of these uh, smoke plumes. 
and what I'll do is invert the smoke plume so that the black becomes white and the white becomes black. And then I'll screen that smoke on top of the fire. Let's go ahead and scale this up. And I want to speed up um, or time stretch this layer so that it plays back faster. So we'll do maybe 65% and then move this forward in time. All right, just like that. It's far too uh, thick. What I'll do is do a curves effect and uh, bring down the gamma so that's not so thick. Bring down those highlights just like that. And then I'll mask out the bottom part of this so it just blends right in. That's a feather. Yeah. Alright, that takes care of the smoke. One thing I do like to do is duplicate the smoke. Just scale it up a lot. Um, bring the time stretch back to normal 100%. And uh, like bring this down. It just has a little hint of smoke going over the entire screen to just really bring the feel. Turn down that opacity to like 15%, not much at all. Alright, something else very important in my opinion are these lens dirt elements. You can also download this free from actionvfx.com. They got a lot of cool stuff. Go check out the website, actionvfx.com. Anyway, I'll position this how I think it's good. I'll do an elliptical mask just around this fire here. And I'll bring this down, feather it out a good bit. And uh, for the color correction, I'll do a tint effect. And I'll grab the whites and bring this down to more of a reddish orange just like that bring the amount down a little bit and then I'll screen this on top of the fire alright we do need to make these elements flicker a little bit so we'll go to the opacity add an expression and we'll do wiggle for the frequency we'll do about 7 and for the amplitude let's do about 25 and make the default value 50 percent so we have a few of those lens elements composited over our screen alright one last thing we could do is add some sparks now you can make some uh, simulated sparks with some kind of particle plugin like particular or stardust or maybe some kind of 3d software but you can also get some stock footage like this from actionvfx.com again it's really nice we'll just put some sparks on this fire we can just really feel the entirety of this fire effect with the sparks the smoke and the lens elements and the glow and all that stuff it really helps to complete the realistic look of this effect all right, so I think we're completed. This Oh, this turned out so good. Much better than I expected. Better than the examples. Love this effect. And man, just get creative with this. Originally, I did it to where it was burning at just a sphere, and now I did it with a star. And I'm sure you can do it with many other things. Just you're completely flexible with that first shape layer you make. Just design the distortion maps, the displacement maps to fit the shape of your fire so it blends good. You should be able to be pretty free with this. I hope this definitely was a learning experience these past uh, what 25 30 minutes and do pardon me for how long it took to cover all these ideas hope you guys like the realism advancement of this fire simulation when compared to the last one i tried to be more condensed efficient and orderly with the steps executed to construct this so hope you were able to follow along i've really been excited to post this episode it's been long overdue uh, maybe inspired you guys uh, to some awesome ideas techniques uh, to achieve whatever effect you're going for particularly this fire simulation. Hey, it really helps when you leave a like and uh, be sure to subscribe so you won't lose this channel after you finish watching this video. I don't post videos that often, but when I do, I like to make it a real uh, treat. But I I've had so much fun in this video. I look forward to seeing you in future episodes of Visionary Universe. And hey, also check out the Facebook page. Some pretty cool stuff going on there. So I made this video. It's like a contest, right? We have 100% After Effects versus Trapco Particular, and we have a mixture of both. So there's some competition going on here. So I think it's pretty cool that 100% After Effects came out the winner. So yeah, check out the Facebook page and let me know which one you think is better.